Hello, I would like to read an expanded version of a blog article entitled Eastern Orthodoxy and the Ritual Cursing of All Other Christians. Many have been told that Eastern Orthodox Christianity is a welcoming, mystical version of Christianity, one that is not hung up on legalism or on excessive dogmatism. It may come as a surprise then to learn that Eastern Orthodox Christians not only formally affirm that they are the only Christians on planet Earth, from the Synod of Jerusalem of 1672, Decree 10, but that Eastern Orthodox Christians are called to ritually and formally curse every year all who disagree with them. The document that they use to curse all non-Orthodox is called the Synodicon of Orthodoxy and is read yearly on the Feast of Orthodoxy, or at least it is called to be read yearly in the Feast of Orthodoxy, which is also called the Sunday of Orthodoxy and the Triumph of Orthodoxy. From the titles of the feast day on which it is read, it is clearly being associated with the very identity of Eastern Orthodox Christianity and of what it means to be an Eastern Orthodox Christian. It is celebrated on the first Sunday of Great Lent in the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Synodicon is especially associated with the Seventh Ecumenical Council, which defines the meaning of anathema. This is mentioned because some will try to change the definition of anathema to one which is not that given by the Council. The Council, however, defines and describes its own use of terms, and so therefore its definition of anathema is the requisite one for properly establishing the Eastern Orthodox understanding of what it means to be formally accursed by the Church. The Council's definition of an anathema is, quote, Now, an anathema is nothing less than complete separation from God, unquote. That comes from the Second Council of Nicaea in the letter from the Synod to the Emperor and Empress, from the Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers, Second Series Set, Volume 14, page 573. The Imperial Sacra, read at the first session, also describes the, quote, canon canonical censure, unquote, as sending one to the, quote, fires of Gehenna, unquote, page 532. In session six, the council speaks of those who refuse to bow down and kiss icons with affection, see pages 572 and 573 in particular, describes these as, quote, God forsaken and God hated heretics, unquote, page 542. It must also be recalled that, according to the Eastern Orthodox, these conciliar documents and their pronouncements have the same infallible authority as Scripture. It is moreover clear that these anathemas are not medicinal, nor conceived as such by the Eastern Orthodox Church as prescribed in its conciliar documents. Giving these anathemas a therapeutic spin is an unsupported modernist reading that is incredibly misleading. For in reality, these anathemas are a using of the keys of the kingdom given to the church by Christ to send people to the lake of fire. There is nothing therapeutic about the lake of fire. You will find further or you will further notice that these anathemas are not calls to repentance. They are a judicial sentencing. They are a judicial sentencing followed by their corresponding judgments. As Canon 13, in this instance dealing with those who misuse monastic properties, from the Seventh Ecumenical Council states that to be, quote, excommunicated, unquote, is to be, quote, condemned from the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and assigned their place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. 
unquote, page 564. Turning more directly to the Synodicon itself, and having clearly in mind what is meant by the term anathema, it clearly states in the section from 1583 from a sigillian, uh, it's an unusual term, a sigillian uh, is from the Byzantine world. Um, it denoted an official document, an act that bears a formal seal. Uh, documents referred to as a sigillian were issued by the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire, councils of the Orthodox Church, and the patriarch of Constantinople. In other words, it represents a, a universally authoritative and binding act. So uh, from the section of 1583 in the Synodicon, signed by the three chiefest patriarchs, uh, those of Constantinople, Alexandria, and Jerusalem, respectively, which also by inclusion uh, uh, has uh, Russia as well, because Russia was a metropolia at the time under Constantinople. Uh, all of these together signed this, uh, these uh, documents, these anathemas, in the presence of the rest of the prelates of the council, concerning all who are not in the Eastern Orthodox Church, quote, that whoever does not confess with heart and mind that he is a child of the Eastern Church, baptized in Orthodox style, and that the Holy Spirit proceeds out of only the Father, essentially and hypostatically, as Christ says in the Gospel, shall be outside our church and shall be anathematized, unquote. In other words, not being in the Orthodox Church and affirming the filioque means that you are consistently and formally cursed to perdition by the Eastern Orthodox Church yearly. Regarding those who take communion, quote, that whoever says that our Lord Jesus Christ at the Mystic Supper had unleavened bread made without yeast, like that of the Jews and not leavened bread, that is to say, bread raised with yeast, let him depart far from us and let him be anathema as one having Jewish views and those of Apollinarios and bringing dogmas of the Armenians into our church on which account let him be doubly anathema, unquote. In other words, those who hold the position that the Lord Jesus Christ at the Last Supper used unleavened bread as per Jewish law are damned with the further inference that the use of unleavened bread in communion is likewise a damnable offense, thus implying that the entire West are damned heretics. But some may object with an objection such as anathemas apply only to those under the authority of the church. To answer this objection, and ignoring that the quoted anathemas each begin with whoever, it is certainly a red herring to deflect the universality of the Synodicon stance vis-a-vis -vis the non-Orthodox by claiming that the anathemas only apply to those under the authority of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The more general counter to the objection, therefore, is that according to the Eastern Church, those outside of the Eastern Church are not any part of the body of Christ, because the Orthodox Church believes it's the only church. And so those outside have no possibility of being saved anyway apart from the Eastern Church and so are already accursed. The objection is again falsified, this time more specifically, when the Synodicon claims positive authority over those outside the Eastern Church. It does this when it declares that those who are not a child of the Eastern Church are, one, outside the Church, and two, damned to Gehenna. This is made explicit when it pronounces that these others, quote, shall be outside our church and shall be anathematized, unquote. In other words, it does not merely set people outside of the jurisdiction of the Eastern Church in order to leave them neutrally in God's hands, but also claims damning authority over them, 
over those outside of the authority structure of the Eastern Church itself. This is further evidenced by the foregoing anathemas when the Synodicon condemns the doctrines of the Armenians, i.e. a group famously outside of the Eastern Orthodox Church. For it is not merely unacceptable to teach what they teach, according to the Eastern Orthodox, it is grounds for doubling the curse. As we will see in the following anathema, not only are those who hold to the validity of unleavened bread condemned, but also those who use the Pope's calendar, calling it atheistic. Clearly, the Synodicon is rejecting its use in universal terms because it believes it has per se authority to speak definitively on these matters. Moreover, it condemns in explicit terms those outside the EO Church. Those who are not children of the Eastern Church and baptized in Eastern style. Thus, if it didn't see itself as rightly making definitive claims against the non-Orthodox, as though taking a kind of neutral stance, then it would not see itself as having any business condemning the Armenian Orthodox en masse. But it condemns them because the Synodicon sees itself as rightly pronouncing over all who are, outs who are inside and all who are outside the Orthodox Church. We've already seen that the Seventh Ecumenical Council called such heretics God-hated and God-forsaken. And it claims this as an objective truth, whether they are inside or outside the church. And so anyone who doesn't use leavened bread for communion is also now confirmed to be going to hell. Furthermore, after cursing all Western Christians who affirm the filioque, and regarding all those who do not use Eastern customs or the Eastern calendar, quote, that whoever does not follow the customs of the church as the seven holy ecumenical councils decreed and holy Pascha and the Menologion, which is an ecclesiastical calendar prescribing feast days and fasting periods, with which they did well in making it a law that we should follow it and wishes to follow the newly invented Pascalion, uh, that's the uh, date, uh, the way of finding the date for Pascha, which is Easter. Um, and so if someone wishes to follow the newly invented Pascalion and the new Menologion, i.e. the Gregorian calendar of the atheist astronomers of the Pope, and opposes all those things and wishes to overthrow and destroy the dogmas and customs of the church, which have been handed down by our fathers, let him suffer anathema and be put out of the church of Christ and out of the congregation of the faithful, unquote. In other words, not using the right calendar or celebrating Pascha, Easter, on a different day, places one under a curse and sends one to hell, according to the formal and unchangeable pronouncement of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Eastern Church appears to have fallen victim to the Galatian heresy. Quote, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. We're quoting the Apostle Paul to the Galatians here. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain. Unquote. Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. In other words, having begun in the Spirit, are the Orthodox now being perfected by the flesh? One might also be reminded of the Apostle Paul's admonition to the Colossians, where he says, quote, Therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. Jesus did not nail such inversion of the same. The Apostle Paul thus commands, we quote, let no one pass judgment on you, unquote, in relation to such calendrical observances. And yet the Eastern Orthodox Church considers its triumph of orthodoxy 
to be the passing of sentence and judgment on these very sorts of things, down to the minutia of which calendar keeps one out of hell. Of course, they may give many high-sounding phrases why holding to such traditions is valuable, and we will not dispute that holding to such things can be beneficial, but not unto condemnation. As the Apostle Paul says to the Colossians, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians 2.8 in conclusion, the Eastern Orthodox Church is one which not only refuses to acknowledge that any non-Orthodox are Christian at all, but ceaselessly curses all others who would claim to be Christian independently of their ecclesiastical authority. If you are not Eastern Orthodox, they are cursing you. They have been cursing you. They will continue to curse you. And they are cursing all of your Christian ancestors and descendants who are not Orthodox. This yearly ritual cursing, called to be done openly in the church, carries all authority for them, and in their mind is bindingly true. It condemns everyone else to hell, and is not therapeutic, but clearly juridical. Those who claim that the Eastern Church is not legalistic or given to dogmatism are either misled or misleading. Glory to Jesus Christ.